I absolutely cannot believe that I'm here making this video. Fun fact, I have been dreaming about making this particular video for months and months and months, at least two years actually, that I have been thinking about making this particular video. And this video is about how I personally made $100,000, yes, six figures, $100,000, as a full-time teacher with no ads, no help, and making six figures in my TBT store. And that's what TBT paid me last year. So I wanted to go in depth about like how that has happened and you know, all of the things that I think personally have contributed to getting to this spot. Um, specifically because even though $100,000 in a year is not a TBT milestone, it is a personal milestone and something I have wanted to hit for a really long time and something that I worked so, so Hard on. I set this goal at the beginning of the year to make 100,000 on TBT and honestly I did not think it was going to happen. I had very very big doubts about it but I managed to scrape it out so let's chat about that. Before we start, I do want to say if you want more tips and more help, make sure that you are on my email list. Some people don't know that I have an email list, but yes, we're rocking and rolling over there. I only send out one email per week, most weeks, unless there's something crazy going on. And I share lots of tips and helpful things over there that you don't get over here. It also will help you make sure that you never miss a video because I always share when a new video goes out. So click the link down below to join that and I will send you a couple freebies in return. I also want to be super clear before we start that I did not make $100,000 in my first year on Teachers Pay Teachers. This is year number four plus a couple extra months for me and so it has taken time to get to this level which is something that I really want to point out early on because you'll find people out there on the internet saying that things are going to be instantaneous and easy and the truth is that they're not. This right here is building a business and I want this business to last and therefore I have to put in the hard work and the time and the effort in order to make it work. So if anyone is over there trying to tell you that you can like instantly make a bajillion dollars, they're probably full of it. I say probably because I always like to hedge my bets, but you know, it's much more likely that you're going to have slow and steady progress and it's going to take some time. So if you're watching this and you're not quite, you know, at the six figure mark, I want you to feel, you know, take a deep breath. It's okay. You will get there. And that is why I'm making this video to give you some tips and to help you figure out how to get there. So let's go, let's go, let's get there. All right, second fun fact of the day. This is the third time I have filmed this video. I don't know why, but I just keep filming it and it just keeps seeming not right. So hopefully third time's the charm. I usually go with whatever I get on the first take no matter what, but you know what, here we are. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna go through kind of, kind of telling my story and kind of sharing tips of how I managed to get to $100,000 on TPT in one year with no ads and no help and it just being me. Um, and we have seven specific tips that I will share as I kind of talk you through kind of how I made this happen. Now again, it's taken some time, but so bear that in mind. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing is that um, when I first started, I just got started. It can feel really scary to get started in your business and to put yourself out there on the internet and it can feel weird and scary and you might not feel like you're ready. Just start it anyway. If you want to do it, then that means that you are ready to do it. So just go for it. Because the truth is that most of us have no idea what we're doing when we get started. I had no idea what I what I was doing when I got started. And I didn't even get started on TPT. I actually got started as a blogger, just starting with blogs in my first year of teaching. So not like I was like this amazing teacher and you know, everyone was like, oh, you must share everything you know. No, what happened was I got really frustrated because I had such a hard time as a new teacher finding any accessible, easy to find information about how to teach elementary music. And you know what? The kids kept showing up and I had to do different lessons every time I saw them. And I was like, I'm running out of things. I don't know what to do. And I was having such a hard time finding lessons that were easily accessible, that were, you know, not difficult for me to implement. You know, it wasn't super, super crazy. And so I started my blog because I was like, you know what? If I'm having this problem, other people are having this problem. And if there is anything that is working for me, I want to share it. Now, with just getting started really, really early, I never made it seem like I knew what I was doing. I always came at it with an open 
you know, every very openly and I would tell people, this is my first year teaching. Here's something that was I was struggling with and now it got better. Here's something that's working for me. Hopefully it'll work for you. Whether it's your first year teaching or your 30th year of teaching or you're good at technology or bad at technology or whatever, just go ahead and start because if you're wanting to do this, you have that inkling, that means that you are on the right path and you're gonna learn a lot more by doing the thing than you are by waiting around <laughs> until you're like better experienced or whatever it is that you're waiting for. So I just got started in 2017 as a blogger sharing literally anything that I could that I thought might be helpful to somebody else. And some of those blog posts are still really great and some of them are eh, not very, but I learned a lot through all of that and through blogging through starting my email list like doing those things at the beginning really helped me to get started and i had no intention of starting a tpt shop until about a year later when i wanted to make some activities for my kiddos and i tried to hand draw some music notes and i was like wow those are really ugly and so then i went on you know a deep dive and figured out how i could you know make these things that i wanted to do in my classroom on the computer and found it was so much easier and through doing that i was like huh this is a lot of work one two this would be an easy way to share more useful tips with other people because i can share specific things that you can do that you can do quickly right now and it was just another avenue to help teachers and help people find what they needed and that was what really spoke to me and then the idea of making some money on top of it i do have to say definitely definitely made me happy i started my blog with the money that i made from cashback apps because your girl was broke <laughs> and so i was really enticed by the idea of making a little bit of money but really it was like this would be a great way to enhance my blog to share more to help more people and let me tell you the first product i made i was already hooked which takes me to number two so as i started my tbt shop what i did is i used things in my classroom that the kids loved and I took those and I made them into products to put on TBT. But I didn't just stop there and be like, oh, here's a product. What I did was I made product lines. And actually this is really um, funny because it's January and my first true product line was my snowman matching games. And there were three of them. And it was also my first set of products that actually did really well and it started like kind of taking off. And so I kind of feel like that's, you know, my first like real products because those are the first ones that really started taking off my first products line and they changed my life. Um, I got obsessed. I made all the snowman matching games then I made heart matching games and I made all the things. So what I did is I took the product that was working in my classroom, the snowman matching games, and then I made that into a product line. So it was multiple products so that you could purchase more than one product at a time. And then I just kept going and kept going so that there were enough products that you can be, you know, supplied for all the different seasons. You don't have to do seasonal, obviously, but I do love a good seasonal resource. I just, I'm obsessed. Um, and so I used the products and made product lines. That way I'm using what I'm doing in class so I'm saving time because I'm doing that. I also already know it works because it's working in my classroom. And then I am able to adjust that to make enough different products so that my store is able to grow at a quick rate because once you make one product in a product line, it's much easier to make the rest. So you're able to get more products in your store quicker. Now, if you're not in the classroom anymore, that's okay. Just make whatever it is that you are wanting to make that would work if you were in the classroom that you can use, you know, share with your teacher friends that you used to use when you were in the classroom or what you wish you had when you were in the classroom, like that's fine. But just always come at it from the angle of like, what would be good if I was teaching right now? And that's kind of how I do it. Even now I'm still, y'all, today I, we have like a couple of extra days. I'm. I'm filming this the first week of January. So we have like three days this week and then next week is our first full week. So I was like, I don't wanna do my whole lessons because it's only three days instead of a whole week. So I should save like my good lessons for next week. So I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, throw together something really, really quick. And it turned into like a whole thing with a movement activity and I wrote a song and like this whole thing. And now I'm like, I need to go post that on Teacher Pay Teacher. Like I'm so excited for it. The kids are gonna love it. And so we're gonna use it this weekend and see how it goes. Uh, but it just goes to show you like that is so me to a T. Like I cannot just do 
things simply and therefore I have to make 87 million of them. But grab the things your kids love and then make them into products. When you're making products, don't just make products, but also market them. So I mentioned that I started as a blogger and I think that is one of my huge, huge, huge advantages. Um, I wouldn't, starting over, I wouldn't do blogging for a year before I started TBT, but having done that, I have to say it was such a huge advantage because I came into TBT already doing marketing and already with a tiny audience. It wasn't very big. I didn't even have a hundred people on Instagram. I think I had maybe like, I don't know, 50 on you on email. I'm totally making that up, but I can go look it up and I'm probably not going to. Um, not many, but I did have something. I knew how those things worked and I was already marketing, even though I didn't know it, because I'm already sharing things. I'm already telling people who I am. And as soon as I had those products, I was able to market the products because then not just am I sharing a blog post, but I'm sharing a blog post that talks about the products and so from the get-go I have been marketing in content marketing which personally I think is the very best kind of marketing because you are able to get your products in front of eyes so people know that you exist they start to use your tips so they hopefully start to trust you because your tips are working every time you share a tip someone uses it and it works they're trusting you a little bit more you get that name recognition people now know about your products and they understand your products better so they're more willing to click that link and purchase and it just like there's so many benefits to content marketing that's not what this video is about so i'm not gonna get on my soapbox but there are other videos about content marketing, actually a whole playlist, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely go check that out. But my point being that when I started making products, I wasn't just making products, I was also marketing them with my blog and my very sad Instagram skills. Um, and so I did that from the get-go and that made a huge, huge, huge difference because those links to, from those blogs are still converting today, years later. And that is huge. It also kept me disciplined to make sure that I'm, you know, writing blogs every week. It kept me disciplined and helped me to grow an audience because I was doing that, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But um, having that blog really is like, frankly, it's the key to my success. That's why I have a whole blogging course because I'm very passionate about it. I think it's really, really, really important. I know not everyone's into it, but you should be into it because it really makes a difference. So make your products, but also market your products because they're going to make a huge, huge, huge difference if you're marketing, especially now because there are more people on TPT. It is not oversaturated. I hate when people say TPT is oversaturated. No, it's not. No, it's not. TPT is not Amazon. TPT is not Google. Like TPT is still a specialized thing, but there are more people on TPT now than there were five years ago or 10 years ago. Um, so as more people do come, one of the best ways to get more eyes on your product specifically is to be marketing. And if you have that content marketing going, that's gonna help. All right, so, so far we have just get started wherever you are, make things that your kids love and then make them into product lines and make sure that you're making products, but also marketing products because you have to have things to sell and you need avenues in which to sell them. Next up is I was chugging along through 2019, going into 2020, super excited for my first four figure month. I knew I was going to hit it. I was so close. And then the pandemic happened <laughs> and I had a total of zero digital activities. My stuff was matching games and printable things and things to use in class. And I was making presentations that were PDFs, like why? Um, but I had all of these things that did not work with digital. And so when we went to digital in 2020, my sales went to zero, like truly zero. I was so stressed. And then on top of like me being stressed about school, because I also had to figure out digital for my kiddos. And it was just like stress fest. It was crazy. Um, so my next tip is what I did next, which is that I pivoted. What I mean by that is I was making, you know, all these products. I was making these printable matching games. I had, you know, X, Y, Z, these things going on. I had ga my game plan for what the next couple products I was going to make were. And I did a whole 180. And instead, or 360, would it be 360? Because we're not going backwards, that would be 183, I, I don't know. Um, but regardless, I completely turned around and changed my entire game plan 
because I needed those digital activities. So as you are going about your, you know, TBT life, you may have situations where you need to pivot, whether that's just because you want to, because you are more interested in one thing than something else, whether that's because you are looking for a new way to, you know, a new product line and you just want to try something new, or whether it's because something crazy happens like 2020, where everything is suddenly changed and uprooted overnight, you might find that you need to pivot and don't be scared to do that go for it. I went full ham into digital activities. I went crazy into all of these things and it paid off. I was able to turn my store around. It maybe hindered me. I don't know because I don't have a crystal ball so I can't you know figure out if it would have been better if that hadn't happened. I don't know. But what did happen is I was able to continue making money and I was able to do that which was really good because we all know the distance learning lasted way longer than we thought it was going to and so I needed to have that for the whole next year and then i also had stuff to use in my class as well so whether you just want to try something new and you know see how it goes or whether you're forced into trying something new don't be scared to pivot when you need to now all throughout all of this as i was working on my blog and my products and even through 2020 actually especially through 2020 i was really focused on longevity i have always been a like long-term thinker which is helpful but even if you're not this is still something that is helpful so as you're going about your you know life your tpt life you want to make sure that you are doing things that are going to be helpful for the long run so for me that has been blogging and email being my like main priorities other than making products this is helpful because my blogs actually blog posts get better with time as opposed to like an instagram post that people see for like 24 hours on with a blog your blog doesn't start really getting seen until like three six nine months later so blog posts after a year are doing way better than they were when you first posted them that is not the case with instagram or tiktok or facebook or any of those social medias so i have always seen that and i have always gravitated toward my blog for that reason the other reason i like it is because you're able to get a lot more in depth which is really helpful for seo purposes people finding you from google and it's helpful because frankly you know your girl likes to talk and so being restricted to little you know captions on instagram is not my favorite i was so excited when they made reels a minute and 30 seconds because at first i was like y'all i cannot do these super short videos like i just have so many things to say that's why we're here on youtube and so i'm the same way with my blog is i want to write things in depth i want you to understand everything so even when i compare my blog posts to other blogs in my niche a lot of times mine are way longer because i just like to make sure that i'm explaining things well so those are some reasons why blogging helps long term the other thing i focused a lot on is my email list because an email list is something that you own you grow and it converts better than anything that i've got going on it converts better than instagram better than youtube better than blog posts like all of the things it converts so well when i send an email even today i sent an email like in the middle of the day well i scheduled it to send it in the middle of the day and i could tell when i sent that email because the cha-ching started rolling in after i sent it and so that doesn't always happen of course but that is something that i worked on from the get-go actually because when i first started i would read all these blog posts about you know things I wish I knew when I first started blogging. And I cannot tell you how many of those said, I wish I'd started my email list sooner. And I was like, well, if everyone says they should start their email list, I'm going to start it now. So I started my email list at the very beginning. I wasn't post, I wasn't sending things at first when I had like one subscriber, but I had a free resource library. So you could sign up for the free resource library. And once I got to about 50 subscribers, then I started sending emails. And now I'm at like over 10,000. And that has been something that has been a labor of love for five years but it's paid off so well so well um i cannot even explain to you like how well that has paid off and how much i rely on that and the great thing is that your email list is something you own as opposed to like instagram which has blockouts or tpt i don't own teachers pay teachers 
but I do on my email list, which means that if I needed to, you know, TBT shut down tomorrow, I could send an email and say, hey, this is where my products now live and this is where you can go buy them now. So always have those things in mind as you are going about your, you know, journey that you want to keep in mind things that are going to help you in the long run, things that are going to continue to work over and over and over like a blog post, um, things that are going to be something you own instead of something you rent. Now, I'm not sure if you caught on, but there is one word that I've said a couple of times already, and that is the word consistently. One of the biggest, biggest, biggest contributors to anyone's success, but especially I can personally attest to mine, is being consistent over time. So from the very beginning, I took my business really seriously, like very seriously. I am like that, like y'all. My husband and I had a date before we started dating and we discussed like, okay, if we're gonna date, then our end goal is gonna be marriage. Otherwise we're wasting our time here. I'm the same way in business. I started my blog and I was like, all right, this is a, you know, this is for real. We're gonna do things, you know, by the book. We're gonna do things right. We're gonna set things up so that they work for, you know, over the years. And like from the very beginning, I was dedicated. I used to write two blog posts a week and I would type them out in a Google, sh in a Google, or not even Google, in a Microsoft Word document because your girl didn't have internet. I told you I was broke. Um, so I would type them out on a Word document. I would go to my in-laws house to do my laundry and I would take my laptop with me and while the laundry was going, I would sit there and I would, uh, you know, copy and paste it into my blog and I would, you know, add all the links and all that kind of stuff while I had internet that I, you know, stole from my in-laws. So thank you. Um, and so having and so just, I was telling you that story to tell you that from the beginning, I was very consistent in what I'm putting out and also what I'm putting in. So what I mean by that is I had a certain number of blog posts I would post. When I started TBT, I was, you know, working on products and posting not really a certain number, but I was posting them periodically. And I also was putting in a consistent amount of work. So I have been putting in between an hour and two to three hours depending on the season of life into my business every day for five years and I gotta tell you that is definitely probably the thing that has helped me the very most because that gives me time to make the products it gives me time to market the products it gives me time to figure out what the heck I'm doing and what direction I'm going to and all of those things it gives me the space I need to do the things that actually need to get done and how many hours you put in make a much bigger difference than how many years you've been on TBT. If you've been on TBT and you've done, you know, an hour a week for a year, that's what, 52 hours? If you do an hour a day for a year, that's 365 hours. Which one of those people do you think is gonna do better? Probably the one that put in an hour a day. It doesn't have to be tons and tons and tons of time, but the more consistent you can be, the better things will go. And I have been very consistent from the beginning. Y'all, I work on my business every day, every day. Sometimes I'll take a weekend day off, but pretty much every day. And that gives me the time and the space and the, you know, all of the things I need in order to actually make progress. You can't make progress if you don't have the time to work on your business. And lastly, as I went through my TBT journey and as I made products and I made blog posts and all those things, I have really learned to follow the data and go where it tells me. So although I'm perfectly happy trying new things, I always make sure that it's going to work before I like dive headfirst into something new. So following the data in what kind of products I should make and what kind of blog posts are converting well and you know, all of the those things what kind of traffic what's bringing in traffic those things have helped me to make sure I'm focusing on the right thing because actually I just was watching a video about Pinterest today and the girl in the video said she said if you're doing a hundred wrong things a day it's not gonna make you progress in your Pinterest account but if you're doing the right things then it will and it's the same thing for TBT you're making products but your products are frankly not super great or they're not selling well or they're not converting or you know people aren't buying because they don't know that your products are good because your like you know previews aren't very descriptive or you know whatever it is if you're doing things but not making a return on that that's not actually going to help you the caveat to this i will say is that i you should give it 
enough time to work so on the internet three to six months is really truly the amount of time that you need to give something to see if it's going to work or not so if you start a blog it's not going to work in a week it's not going to work in two weeks it's not going to work in a month but after three six months a year then it's going to gain some traction and then you can see whether or not it's working for you same thing with products if you have a new product line it may not sell immediately but it might sell in three months or in six months so do follow the data. Don't get so caught up in it that you like nix things before they have time to really take off, but follow the data in figuring out what kind of products you should sell and all of those things. That has been one of the biggest things for me is that I pay attention to what's selling and I make more of that because if it's already selling, then people already like it and they're more likely to want to purchase things that are similar. So follow the data as you are going through your whole TPT journey and it will lead you to whatever products are gonna help and whatever traffic is gonna help the most and all of those things. Like your dashboard will tell you a lot of stuff. That's really helpful and really important. So make sure you go check it out. All right, so that's the gist of how I have managed to make $100,000 in one year with no ads, with no help, with teaching full time is just making sure that I'm following these things, just getting started, making products that my kids love and turning them into products lines, making products and marketing those products, um, pivoting whenever necessary, focusing on long-term stuff like email and blog, um, keep keeping, keeping myself consistent no matter what's going on in the business. So whether that's summer and I'm making no money or whether that's, you know, back to school season and things are crazy, I try to keep it very consistent with what I'm putting in and also what I'm put getting out. Um, and following the data so you can see what's actually working and spend more time on those things. And if you really want like a recipe, my recipe would be like make products your kids love into product lines, market said products, build your audience and just keep going and keep going and keep going until you are, you know, at the place where you love. Because really what this business is, is rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat until it gets to working and you got to keep going you got to give it time to work so again this is you know year four on tbt year five in the business and this is the first year that i've hit that landmark so it is possible it's not quick it's not easy but nothing in life that is good is ever quick or easy so make sure that you are Stay in the course thinking long term and i would love to know what other things you would share down below and I would love to know what you would like to add to this list so if you have anything that you have found has helped you a lot then leave that down below in the comments I think this video is much better than the first and the second time so I think we're gonna stick with it third time's the charm and thanks so much for watching I'll see you next time Bye.